Today on Munson Made This, we have a very cheesy video for you. Ryan Little. <laughs> Welcome to Months and Made This. My name is Michael and I make vegan recipes. So if you're looking for more of those, definitely subscribe to this channel. And if you like the video so far, all five seconds of it, definitely hit the like button. Today I have three very special recipes for you because anytime I come up with an idea on how to make something, I come up with variations and I wind up with three recipes that I just have to share. And today I have a very special kind of partner on this, and that is R.W. Garcia Snacks. Now they were kind enough to send me three boxes of their crackers. I have their lentil turmeric crackers, I have their uh, organic sweet potato, and I have the organic beet crackers. Now, instead of just using these crackers in a recipe, I decided to make recipes for each of these crackers. So I have very special, delicious cheese spreads that are designed to pair with each of these. And they all have something in common. They are made with baked tofu. So I have a sriracha baked tofu that I'll use to make a sriracha coconut cheese spread for the lentil turmeric crackers. Uh, I'll be using this baked um, sorry, smoked tofu to make a smoky white cheddar cheese spread for the sweet potato crackers. And then finally, I'll actually be using the teriyaki baked tofu, um, although we won't be going in a teriyaki direction, but I will be making a caramelized onion and balsamic spread to go with these beet crackers. That's a mouthful. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with these cheese sauces or these cheese spreads. The first one I'm going to make is the caramelized onion one so I can get those caramelized onions started. So uh, I will see you back here at my stove and we will start those caramelizing. To caramelize these onions, I have a small pan just on medium heat with a bit of olive oil and I have just finely chopped up a red onion. I prefer to do a red onion when I'm caramelizing. It just gets a little bit sweeter and I think the color is a little bit better. So I'm just adding these into the pan. Um, I didn't want to use too large of a pan here either because I kind of want them to caramelize on the bottom but also kind of stew in their juices. So this pan is perfect for this. So what I'm gonna do here is just kind of toss these around, get them coated in a little bit of the oil. And then I'm gonna add a bit of salt, which is gonna help to draw out some of the liquid in the onions. Smells incredible in here already. I will be adding balsamic vinegar to it because this is a balsamic caramelized onion cheese spread, but I'm not gonna do that until the very end. So this is gonna work out in the background while I'm preparing the other spreads. And it's probably gonna take about 15 minutes and I will stir this around and just keep an eye on it during that time. So I'll press them down a little bit so that more onions are on the surface or the, the bottom of the pan. And then I'll stir them, maybe add a little bit of water if there gets to be too much caramelization on the bottom. But other than that, they basically work on their own, just need to be stirred occasionally. This has been going for maybe just about four minutes here and you can already see that some of the fond, the burnt bits has started to form on the bottom and some of the onions have caramelized. So I'm gonna let that go a little bit longer, just kind of let them hang out. When that gets a bit darker, I'll add a bit of water just to deglaze that, and that'll just help things to darken up as well. But these are going great. Uh, I was setting up to do the uh, other cheese while the onions were caramelizing, but I guess I needed to pay a little more attention to these than I thought. So we've got some pretty dark fond on the bottom. I'm gonna add just a tablespoon or so of water to the pan and try to get some of that up. And that's, what our caramelization is, that's where our color comes from. So I'm just gonna add this, try to scrape a little bit of those bits up, and then let these keep going. We're probably at about maybe eight minutes at this point, but things are looking great, smelling great.
These onions have been going for about 15 minutes. And again, I know I said that I was gonna be doing other things while this was going, but I decided to just give this my full attention. The onions are pretty much caramelized. Uh, they're in a great place and it's time for the balsamic vinegar. So I'm going to turn this to very low and I'm gonna add just about two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. So with the balsamic, we wanted that on low just so that it doesn't just kind of explode and all disappear. We want the balsamic to reduce and cling to and kind of turn into a nice syrup in here with the onions. And that's what we have. So I just want the rest of the liquid to kind of just go away until it is just a thick syrup clinging to those onions. And then that is it. It needs to cool before we put it into our cheese spread. My caramelized onions are hanging out in the back. I just want them to be at room temp before I put them into their cheese. So while those cool, I'm gonna be making the first cheese, which is for the turmeric and lentil crackers. And it is the sriracha coconut that uses this sriracha baked tofu. I found this at Whole Foods. You can, or not Whole Foods, sorry. <laughs> clearly says Trader Joe's on there. Uh, I got this at Trader Joe's. You can find it at Sprouts, find it at Whole Foods. And this is the first uh, of these baked tofu cheeses that I tried and I instantly fell in love. And I was also really surprised. I, I thought that the, maybe the sriracha would take away a little bit, but I was surprised that when I paired them with these crackers, how much the flavors just popped. So if you're not able to find the baked tofus that I'm gonna be using in this video, you could also use a super firm tofu and just add a little bit of the sriracha to this. Um, just make sure that it's not like a silken tofu or even just like a basic firm tofu. You want it to be like a super firm, high protein or a baked tofu like this. The only tool we're gonna need here is the uh, food processor. And I'm just gonna start adding ingredients. The base for this is the same as the other ones. So it's going to be the baked tofu, which I'm gonna put just directly into the food processor. And because I want that sriracha flavor, I wanna make sure to get all of the sauce from inside. The, uh, these are oil-free, if that is uh, anything that you're interested in. Um, but to add a little bit more kind of like fat, I'm gonna be adding some coconut cream. This also came from Trader Joe's. This is different than coconut milk. This is just a little bit fattier, a little bit thicker. And I kept this in my fridge overnight so that I get more of the uh, coconut cream on top. And you'll see when I use this here, it's pretty thick. This is what you would use to make whipped cream. And this is a two tablespoon measure here. And I'm gonna be adding just about two and a half to three tablespoons of the coconut cream. The others have a little bit less, but because this is a sriracha coconut flavor, I do want this to have just a little bit more of the coconut flavor in it. To the sriracha tofu and the coconut cream, I'm going to be adding a half cup of soaked cashews. Now these have been soaked actually overnight and then drained. And this is what's gonna give a lot of body to the cheese. A lot of the vegan cheeses are made with just cashews, but I wanted to, you know, make it a little bit lighter and, um, you know, maybe a little bit less expensive by adding the tofu instead of the cashews. For our cheesy flavor, I'm going to be adding nutritional yeast. And this is kind of up to you. I'm gonna be adding three tablespoons. Um, I would say three to four is probably a good, oh, good amount. And for a bit of sourness, because most cheeses have kind of a fermented sourness, we're gonna be adding a tablespoon of lemon juice. You want to salt to taste, but I'm gonna start here with a teaspoon of salt. And that is pretty much it. I'm gonna put the lid on and start it blending. Because this doesn't have any liquid in it other than what you soaked into the cashews, it's gonna be a pretty thick mixture and you're gonna see some varying stages of this cheese as we blend it. So I've pulsed it a little bit and you can see here, we still have some chunks of the tofu and we've got some large chunks of tofu and cashews around the sides. So I'm just gonna scrape those down. Any pieces that have stuck to the lid, I wanna take those off and pulse it a few more times. One piece of tofu doesn't seem to want to go in. And again, just scrape down the sides. And what's going to happen is it's going to be kind of a mealy, grainy 
kind of a paste for a while. At some point, it's gonna cling to itself into a ball and be kind of like a dough that'll go around. We'll know that it's done once that ball is gone and we have just a smooth, creamy paste. It's kind of evenly distributed around the food processor. I just stopped it to scrape it down again. I think we're past the um, doughy ball phase. Uh, also, when I open this, I am wanting to scrape down the bottom as well because some of the liquid parts of this can stick to the bottom and I just wanna make sure that that um, comes up as well. All right, we're almost there. Also, wait, at this point too, I would recommend tasting it. So I'm just gonna use my finger here to taste a little. I'm tasting to see if it's salty enough, if it has enough sourness from the lemon juice, enough cheesiness from the nutritional yeast. I actually think it's delicious, so I'm just gonna keep it going. <laughs> Not sure what that was. It has finished blending, and I would say you're looking for something that's the texture of a, say like a smooth hummus. You just wanna try to get as many of the lumps out as possible and get it as smooth as you can. Now, why am I using a food processor as opposed to a blender? When you're blending something or mixing something that's as thick as this, uh, things can just get kind of stuck in the blender and you'd have to use like the tamper, uh, like in a Vitamix, and it would just be a little bit difficult to get out, especially for the process that we're about to do here where we're removing it from the food processor into a container. Uh, it's just kind of messy to try to do that. So that's why I've avoided using the blender, but if that's the only thing you have, give it a try. Uh, it might work. You might just have to thin it out a little bit because it is such a thick mixture. Uh, to store this or to save this or to serve this, you have a couple options. You could use a ramekin like this and just fill a couple of these up and have these so people can just kind of dip in and spread it on their crackers. Or what we're gonna be doing here is making these into little cheese wheels. And I have a springform pan here. This is, uh, I found this one at uh, Home Goods for about $4. I've seen them at Michael's too for a set of three for like $13. So uh, if you want them to be cheese wheels, sort of like a Miyoko's wheel, I would recommend getting one of these. I also have some parchment here and I'm just going to put a piece of parchment over the bottom and then put the spring form part on top and then clamp it down. This just makes the release so much easier. All right, so let's go ahead and add the cheese to the mold. So you just wanna take scoops of this cheese and put it into the mold and try your best to get it into the bottom and the sides so that it's evenly spread throughout. You could also do maybe like a half of a wheel and the other part in a ramekin or um, you have a lot of options however you want your cheese to be served, you can do that. The coconut cream helps this to be a little bit more solid so that you are able to do it in a wheel formation like this and it is able to stand up. All right, so I'm just trying to get this smooth. And in just a second, I'm gonna bang it down here on this towel to try to get any air bubbles out. And then I'm just gonna to top this with another piece of parchment paper. And this is going to go in the fridge. You want this to set up for maybe about eight hours before you serve it in the wheel. Um, otherwise, if you're just gonna serve this in a ramekin with a knife, you can serve it right away. My sriracha coconut cheese is hanging out in the fridge. So I'm ready to make the second one, which is going to be paired with these sweet potato crackers. And this next one is the smoky white cheddar. Now this is our secret ingredient for that. And this is a smoked tofu. This is not the most easy thing to find here in the States. Um, I know Canada has a ton of smoked tofu. They always seem to find it. Uh, this I found at Winco, which always seems to have this. So if you have a Winco in your area, I would check there for this particular smoked tofu. The amount of tofu that comes in the package is slightly larger than the other baked tofus. So I've actually taken a little slice out of the center here. And that's because I want the ends to stay on there where the 
majority of the smoke flavor is. So I'm gonna pop this into the food processor. Pretty much all the other ingredients are the same in the same increments. So I'm gonna throw everything in the food processor and just get it blending. All right, so I'm starting with my smoked tofu. Adding my half cup of cashews. My two tablespoons of coconut cream. I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Tablespoon of lemon juice. And then the teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna blend this and I will be tasting it for seasoning when it's almost fully blended. I do have some liquid smoke on hand just in case it is not smoky enough. The smoked cheese here is just about uh, blended fully. So at this point, I just wanna give it a taste and see how the salt is. Mm. I love this one. I think I'm gonna add just the smallest little dash of liquid smoke just to blow it out, but three drops. It's so good. This, I can't decide if this one's my favorite. The caramelized onion one's really good too. So I'm gonna let this just continue to blend and then we will put this one in the mold as well. Let's add this to the mold. Again, this one is lined with parchment paper and trying to get it into all the edges at the bottom. Our smoky white cheddar is all molded up. I'm going to put parchment on top and then this is gonna go into the fridge and set up. And it's time to make our third and final one, which is our caramelized or balsamic caramelized onion. To pair with the sweet beet crackers, we are going to be making a balsamic caramelized onion cheese spread. And for that, we're going to be using this teriyaki tofu. Now the teriyaki tofu doesn't really read like teriyaki. It just adds a bit of savoriness and a little bit of sweetness. And we'll add the same amount of coconut cream, cashews, three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, tablespoon of lemon juice, and a teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to blend this up just like we did the previous two. And then at the end, we will stir in those caramelized onions. If you were feeling extra lazy, you could just add the caramelized onions to the food processor. But because I wanna make sure that none of the onions break up any further, I'm gonna be transferring our cheese to a bowl and then mixing the caramelized onions into that. Add the caramelized onions. I'm gonna just add all of them. And then we're going to gently mix them in just like you would add chocolate chips to chocolate chip cookie dough. I only have two of these molds, so I actually put the first one, the sriracha one, into the freezer to see if I could get it to set up a little bit so that I could use the mold for the third one here. If I can't, we'll just have to use ramekins, but yeah, it's not set up enough. So you know what? This third one is getting put into ramekins, which is fine. I mean, that's another way of serving cheese, isn't it? So let me put this back in the fridge and then we'll put this into ramekins. And we're going to just put this cheese dip into these ramekins. Now, because it does take a few hours to set up, I've actually made some of these in advance. So we have, that one is the smoky. This one, which could use a little bit of cleanup, is the balsamic caramelized onions. And finally, one with a little piece 
a little taste taken out here is the sriracha coconut. So this is what they look like unmolded. Again, they can use a little bit of love, which we'll do here in a second. And I'm just gonna organize these, put them on a cheese board and try to make a nice presentation for all three of these cheeses. My cheese platter is complete, and I have to say that I'm pretty proud of what I have accomplished here. I've made three cheeses. I have the sriracha coconut, which is with the turmeric and lentil crackers. I have the balsamic glazed caramelized onion with beet crackers, and then I have the smoky white cheddar with sweet potato crackers. And because I was told that when you do make a cheese plate, you wanna make sure to cut a little piece out so that people are more likely to eat it because if they see complete cheese wheels, they don't touch it, they don't wanna to ruin it. So if you cut a little piece out, they're more likely to dig in. And with those small little pieces, I have my own little tasting plate here to give each of these a try. So uh, I'm just gonna go in order here of which we made them. So I have the Sriracha coconut, and just look how beautifully this spreads. Let's give this a taste. Mm. Creamy texture. I mean, for just being basically tofu and cashews, it's so creamy, reads just like a cheese. And the cool thing about this one is that the turmeric in the crackers really brings out the flavors in the cheese. So you get the spiciness, a little bit of spiciness from the sriracha, a little bit of the coconut flavor, and then kind of the like curry spices that come from the combination of the crackers and the cheese. It's really, really good. Let's try the smoky white cheddar with sweet potato. My favorite vegan cheese is Miyoko Smoked Farmhouse. And that thing is so hard to find. You can't find it in stores, but it's such a delicious, smoky, aged cheese. And this, even though it only took like two minutes to make and it just had to hang out in the fridge for a few hours, really serves me all of that amazing, smoky, cheesy flavor that I love with that. But in half the time, and also, not even half the time, no time at all, and also, because there's no oil in this, normally uh, those cheeses are made with cashews and coconut oil. Um, this is higher in protein and doesn't have any of the extra oil that you might not want. Lastly, our balsamic caramelized onion with beet crackers. It's so good. There is a brand of hummus that does a caramelized onion balsamic hummus, and that was sort of the inspiration from this. But as a cheese, it is incredible. And again, each of these crackers really bring out something different in the cheese, but you could always mix and match, make all three, make one of them, try them with your own crackers. It is entirely up to you, but I am so excited to finish eating these, which I will be doing on my eating show, which is Months and Ate This. So follow the link below to join me on Patreon to watch that. Thank you to all of you that have already subscribed and are supporting this channel. It means a lot. Some people have talked about the increase in uh, ads that are appearing in my videos. Well, that's how I am funding these videos. So. Uh, if you're not really a big fan of the commercials, definitely follow me on Patreon and help to support me that way. And maybe one day I can go completely commercial free. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up, share this with your friends, tell them all about the delicious food here on Munson Made This and subscribe if you haven't yet. I will see you next time with another recipe video. Thank you, RW Garcia for the amazing crackers. And I'm ready to dig <laughs> I'm ready to dig in. It's so hard to say. I am ready to dig in. Have a great week. See you next time.